So, um, we're, we're doing pretty good on time. You want to you wanna do a cage match real quick? Sure. It's not a very long clip, I assume. Oh, no. We're going to do, like, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's not a ton to it, but okay. So this is another Gossip Finance cage match with Lacey as your ringside commentator. And this is Dave Ramsey. Hey, what's the guy? Anthony? What's that guy? Anthony something. I forget his name. Anthony uh, O'Neill? Yeah the, yeah, the college guy, whatever. Uh, so this is the, the title of this video is, My Husband is Changing Genders. Should We Stay Married? <laughs> I'm so scared of what they're going to do with this. <laughs> Let's hopefully it's not too bad. I'm sure they'll be tasteful about it. I, you know. Victoria is in Louisville, Kentucky to start off today. Hi, Victoria. How can we help? Hi, guys. Thanks so much for taking my call. Um, I have a just really complicated situation. I'm going to try to distill down to make the most of this call, but potential separation coming up. Um, with my husband, he's active duty military and he makes a good living and I um, work part time and homeschool and uh, just facing just if we were to, you know, um, separate that, you know, we've been making great traction together and besides all the emotional stuff and everything, but I got him on board with, with you know, Dave Ramsey and Chris Hogan and, and we've been paying down almost $50,000 of debt in the past three years and basically I'll go down to just making probably bill money, you know, in I'm just wondering how I can prepare for that. And we talked about me staying together just for a financial thing, but like not being, you know, to be geographical bachelor, I wouldn't PCS with him anymore. So um, just wondering what your advice might be on, on that. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sure you guys are facing this. Um, I, I would, number one, if you're facing something this serious, you need to get a pro in your corner. And that means you guys need to be sitting down with a, a good, strong marriage counselor who can coach you guys through. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. So she hadn't gotten to the gender thing yet. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, possible separation looks, looks like she's pretty much already out the door just with the sound of it for me, just, you know, if you disagree, step in here, but Sounds like she's already pretty much out the door. Um, they're not in terrible financial position. He's working for the military. He's full-time active duty, right? Um, and she said she worked part-time. My first thing, like if she came to me and it was walking in my office, um, marriage counselor, this is, a, I think this is a bad advice for, for two reasons. Well... <laughs> Let's, let's just pause right there, though. Uh, based on the faith-oriented views they have, oh. they are pretty much always going to go the route of try everything possible to keep this marriage um, if, if that is a viable solution. You know, mm -hmm. they, they pretty much always are going to throw something like that in there. However... They, they certainly haven't been so hardcore that I've really heard them say, no, you must stay married, but they, they definitely Push. put that out there first. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is why I, I, I disagree with that. Um, I used to do uh, paralegal work long, long ago. You remember when I was young and pretty before I got old and all ugly. Um, yeah. And uh, I worked for uh, criminal lawyers and divorce lawyers. So... I've dealt with a lot of this kind of stuff, you know, with lawyers and paralegal. Paralegal, you basically get all the phone calls because the lawyer doesn't want to deal with it. So, <laughs> right? So you listen to all the complaints. And they bill you for that too, by the way. So if you call the paralegal and yell at them for an hour, that's $500, <laughs> just so you know. And it's $500 that the paralegal is not the one making. Oh, no, I'm... I'm just, uh... I'm getting my yeah my ten bucks an hour. That was all I was getting for <laughs> that shit. Right. Ten dollars to be abused on the phone by angry people with legal issues. Yeah, but typically the lawyer will give you a big bonus <laughs> a couple times a year just because they don't want you to leave because <laughs> then they have to deal with it or hire somebody else. But no, anyway, <clears throat> this is why I don't like it. There's two things. 
if you're going to a couples counselor, um, it only works if you both agree to go. So you really need to discuss that with them first. Now, if that's the route you want to go, the first thing I would do is I would just go get a personal therapist or counselor, right? Um, but I would definitely go with somebody licensed if it were me, but it's up to you. Um, and I would ask them, do you think couples counseling is the right thing to do? Because they might say, yeah, it's worth a shot. And they might say, I, I think you're barking up the wrong tree and it's just going to make things worse. So before you start pushing your, your spouse to start doing stuff, you should probably get a feel for whether or not that's A, a good idea, and B, if you're going to ask them, how should you approach it, where it's not going to come off as an attack, especially if you're already on uneasy ground in a marriage, right? Because it's, well, we need to go to a couple's counselor so they can tell you how wrong you are and how you need to change, and because that because it comes off like that sometimes. And sometimes people push it like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I want to tell you this is like, look, if you're thinking about getting separated before you go talk to a counselor, you need to go talk to a divorce lawyer and know what your options are before. I mean, you need to know what the lay of the battlefield is if you're potentially going to go into that kind of situation. Right. You need to know what your options are, what you should do, what you can do, can't do. Because a lot of times what happens is, is people do stuff like I'm thinking I might get divorced, blah, blah, blah. I need to save money or do this. And what they do is they start squirreling money away from here and there, not realizing yet yeah, these are joint assets though. So what you're really doing is stealing from your spouse, which if that comes out in a divorce proceeding is going to really ding you. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, I don't know if it dings you or not, but if you it are does. legally married, then regardless of where you locate said money, it, it will be half theirs regardless. Right. You changing its location won't change that legal status of the money. No, but if I take money and I put it into my name and I don't tell the other person about it and they have to find out their attorney finds out, right, which they probably will at some point, then yeah, no, it looks like you're trying to steal and hide money. And you see that a lot with empty the joint account and then just have it in cash and hide it somewhere. <laughs> and the intention oh, sure, might have been, sure. yeah, the intention might not have been malicious, but oh no, that's what it looks like. <laughs> oh, and certainly, certainly whoever the, the lawyer for the other spouse's side is definitely going to spin it that way. Oh yeah. You know, within their argument, you oh, know. Absolutely. All right. Okay, so now let's see if she jumps into the, the gender stuff. Make good, wise decisions. Um, I didn't hear anything just from a common sense perspective healthy about you guys staying uh, married just for financial purposes. That's weird. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, that just sounds weird. That's just a guy talking. I'm not a professional, but I mean, it just just sounds weird. So um, we we still what we love each other. It's just he's um kind of like there's so many good things but um he's decided to um change genders so i would love to say you know hey let's be friends for the rest of our lives that are married but that's the same weird right yeah 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 staying married in that situation is going to be very strange and so um but the pay i mean it depends but i would say yeah i mean that would that'd be a big jump right right i mean if you're not going to be together um, <coughs> romantically at some point you're going to want to be able to move on with your life and and what does that look like mm -hmm. you know and certainly no judgment on my part how people decide to arrange their families and relationships but you know it definitely is more difficult if you've still got this person mm -hmm. um attached to you mm -hmm. in this way to be able to simply go on with your life, which is going to probably be something you want at some point. Yeah, but also if you still love each other and care about each other, but it's just, it's not going to go forward anymore, right? right? You want, this is, this is literally, you want different things. Right. They want to change gender. You want somebody of the current gender they are. 
right. that that's not going to work. And that's not to say anything disparaging about either party here. It's nobody's fault. This is just what it is. Right. Um, but this is where like couples counseling is a, a really shitty thing to advise. Because if somebody's going through a, a gender transition where they're, they're finally, you know, realizing that, that that's what they want and that's what they are. That's what you need to do is you need to dump them into a marriage counseling situation on top of all the other shit they're going through. If you're going to divorce them, you put a lot of shit on the plate there too, but at least it's something manageable as opposed to putting a lot of pressure on them. I think it depends. In this particular caller situation, I don't know that I think a couple's counseling scenario helps repair this relationship. No. Um, she was super kind, but I didn't get the feeling from her that she would be able to go forward in a romantic partnership with this individual once the transition took place. No, and we're not psychologists, therefore, so I'm not. Therefore, just from my personal opinion, it seems like, I mean, if you want some counseling to try to you know, yeah. make some part of the transition go smoother. But like, if you're thinking that you're, you're going to be trying to get them to save anything by sending them in there now, however, if this was a spouse that was like, I don't know, maybe I could stick around through this. Maybe, maybe that actually warrants seeing somebody, but sure. I didn't get that from her. Sure. Head. And we're not, we're not therapists or psychologists. So we, we're just speculating from our perspectives. I think the smart thing to do is to go get a lawyer and just prep for divorce. That, that would be right. what I would advise right out of the gate. Um, because that's, that's what's going to happen, but you need to know what your options are, what you should do, shouldn't do. I mean, it sounds like it, it would potentially be pretty amicable, like from everything that she's said, it, it doesn't seem like there's, you know, any ill will from either of them toward the other. So quite frankly, you know, getting lawyers to start working out the separation of things might just work out just easily that way. Well, it might make it a lot more quick and painless. Right. Than, than dragging this out or trying to do counseling or a bunch of other shit. Just, you know, at this point, just rip off the bandaid. I would. You know, I think someone coaching you, a good counselor, can coach you through how to set some you know, processes and boundaries in place to, um, you know, to create a timeline. And then, um, even though this sounds, um, lawyer can do all this. Yeah. You said all the emotions however, are there, but it also sounds like you got, however, what, what, what I want to offer though is creating boundaries with regards to timelines and whatnot isn't necessarily a bad thing. No. Um, I don't know that that has to come from a counselor or whatever. I don't care what professional it comes from, but I do consider that to be decent advice because, um, you know, some people want to move rather quickly and other people really drag their feet and, you know, some boundaries around what needs to get done so that people aren't, you know, stuck in something forever, you know, waiting for one person. Right. Which is why I think it's better to jump with a lawyer first, because now you have, you have legal things that'll actually secure as opposed to people being willy nilly and changing their minds. Right. Mm-hmm. Once you have agreements down on paper that are signed by a judge or their legal contracts, then it's hard for people to start, you know, changing their minds or being willy nilly or, or all of a sudden being like, no, you know, I'm just screw them. I just want to hurt them. Right. right. Cause that happens in breakups. It always does. And the bottom line is it's better to have it in, you know, documented form than it is to, well, my therapist said that doesn't mean anything. So what if your therapist recommended it? I don't have to listen to my therapist. I do have to complete a contract or I can get dinged in court or sued. So it's better to have actual agreements than, than these half-ass sort of deals. That's, that would be my argument because that could just drag out and make it more painful, especially since we're talking about children here too. That's just really shitty. Those are uh, just talking about this all still uh, in, in terms of uh, you, you've got a good dialogue going, it sounds like. So that's good. Yeah. But, I, yeah. Uh, but, I'm, but as a, even in that good situation, as, in as good a situation as it can be in a bad situation, you, um, you, you still, once you decide to divorce, 
the transaction changes to a business transaction, right? And so, and it doesn't mean you have to be mean to someone who does a business transaction, but you have to be thorough and you have to think through the math. Uh, like for instance, he has an income and you don't, uh, how much debt is left, whose name is on the debt, is there a house involved? Uh, you know, all these kinds of things start to be a business transaction that have to be done on the very, very- Which is why you need contracts. <laughs> clear boundaries. We see this a lot. We really do. And Victoria, one thing I want to suggest, and, and by no way, by no way am I saying I'm, I'm a marriage therapist, but at the same time, uh, let's not prolong it. You know, let's have an like, honest conversation like Dave said, are we going to do this? Or are we not? And once you decide what you're going to do, then y'all need to go down that path with the right counsel. One thing I, I have seen is a lot of people prolong this situation out and then it gets worse and it gets worse down the road. So have the conversation, decide what you're going to do. And once you get there, immediately uh, seek out wise counsel to walk you all through this step. But I got to say, awesome job at least being uh, kind to each other in the midst of this process. All right, I'm going to do... Going to agree and disagree. Yes, you need to get it figured out. You need to get a process. Da, 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 da. What you should do though is you should go see a lawyer first and know what your options are and what your rights are. Because let's say I tell her, yeah, you need to go work it out with him with a counselor, or whatever, and she goes and talks to him, and because I don't know him, I've never met him, he snaps. And it's, oh, I'm taking the kids and screw you and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not going to trust you. No, and you're not getting anything. Get out, blah, blah, blah. And it becomes a big issue or there's a domestic violence problem or things like that. You need to go talk to a lawyer first so you know what you should be saying, right? That's not going to get you into legal trouble. You shouldn't be agreeing to things unless you know what the consequences are. They are doing this backwards. They're saying you should go deal with this first and then go figure out what it is you need to do or know before you go deal with it. No, you need to figure out what you need to know before you deal with this and what your rights are and what you should and shouldn't be well, doing. Then at that point, at that point, at least with that information, it doesn't mean you have to be signing on anything or whatever. It just but just getting that level of information a consultation level even um, could really help a person to start framing in their mind what this could possibly be looking like mm. and well, then deciding if they want to be seeing some sort of a counselor or not or whatever make those decisions of course but but understanding legally what could be about to happen and what the various choices are People don't necessarily know that. Right. And then you can be in a situation where, uh, I'll give you a great example of a client where um, her and her ex-husband, ex-husband were both on the house, but he was on the mortgage. She wasn't, but she was half on the house and he didn't want to sell the house. And so it became one of these things where it dragged on and on and on. And I kept telling her, go see a lawyer, go see a lawyer, go see a lawyer. And it took her two years because they were fighting over custody and everything else and she was distracted. And finally she went and saw a lawyer and they wrapped up the divorce decree and the court ordered him to sell the house in the divorce decree. But she waited two years to get a lawyer and file for divorce and fought for this whole thing. So she's, meanwhile, she's paying rent and taking care of the kids full time, not really getting any alimony. I mean, so you need to know this before you, you go into this because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how the other person's going to react necessarily. So you need to be prepared because once again, it's a life changing event, but yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you want it. Yeah. It'd be nice if it's amicable and nice every time, but it's not. And it's the old, uh, lawyer's joke about, you know, you know, the joke, about why is divorce so expensive? Because law school is nope. Because it's worth no. it. <laughs> You're in a bad marriage, and yeah, it's worth it to get out of it. <laughs> so, in other words, if, if your name is on a debt and he is obligated to pay it in the divorce decree and does not, they do not come after him. The divorce decree does not remove you from liability. You're still liable for that debt. That's what I mean by a business transaction. No, oh, that's not true. That's not true at all. So in a divorce decree, it's a, it's a court order, okay? 
You agree on it, the judge signs it, it's a court order, okay? Uh, let's do this real quick. So you and I were married, we got divorced, right? The debt is under your name, but I agreed to pick up that debt in the, in the divorce decree, right? I don't pay it. They call you and say, well, hey, you haven't paid your debt, right? You know what you do? You tell them, well, no, I'm not supposed to. My ex-husband is. It's Duncan who's supposed to pay it. And that's in a divorce decree. You know what they're going to ask you for? Can we see a copy? You fax them, email them a copy of the divorce decree, stating that with the judge's signature. And you know what they can do? They've got a court order now to come after me. Once the court does that, I agreed to buy that, to take that debt from you in a contract, in a divorce right. decree. It's a contract. It's not your debt anymore. So this idea that no, 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 well, you got to be careful because if it's still under your name, yeah, they might call you first, but you just get your name removed because I'm the one who agreed to pay it. You have a divorce decree. You have it in writing with my signature and a judge. So I don't know what he's talking about. This is nonsense. Let's see what else he's got. You've got to sit down and think about those kinds of things. So that these debts get anything's got your name on it gets clear. The second thing it's you can do, you can call materials. You're going to develop a career track. Uh, Part time and single mom is not on your not in your future anymore. Uh, you're now a single mom unless you get talent money. Divorce. So what are you going to do with your life and what your career look like, what your job look like, and you, know, you got to get on that really fast because you're going to need an income. Yes, you're going to get child support. Well, uh, she might not want to get a career because she might forgo alimony. If she starts making too much money. Yes, you may get some alimony. Yes, he may pick up a lot of the bills, but you still got to create a full time income in this situation to exist. And Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, but now that, that child becomes her number one priority is no longer him. You know, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I mean, that would be ob yeah, obvious. Okay. So it, the child wasn't a priority before, but now. It has to be that way. <laughs> one of the things that I see, Anthony, that uh, divorce attorneys make a huge mistake on quite often is, um, or couples do, and the divorce attorneys allow it to happen, just as a matter of transaction, is, you know, say, a typical case study might be. Husband leaves the household, okay. they get divorced, mom is left with the house, and most of the time has a lesser income. That's not a statement of that's what she deserves, it's a statement of fact, right? Okay. Most of the time she has a lesser income and can't afford the house payment, right? But is trying to hold on to the house and to keep it stable for the kids. And the house should have just been sold. Yes. And to get the bill off of her. She does not need that bill to go with her new her new level of responsibility financially that she's got to pick up now. Uh, that's thing one. Thing two is that from a husband's perspective, the lawyer tells him in that case, in the case where he's leaving the house to her, to quit claim the house over to her, give up his ownership. And they never address the fact that he's still on the mortgage, <laughs> right? But, wait, 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 okay. All right. Well, I think that'll... Now, now, typically, is it... Now, I'll start this off with, I am not a lawyer, nor have I gone through a divorce. But I thought, generally speaking, typically via people in my life that have been divorced that um, a part of the divorce decree typically also involves the mortgage going into whoever's name actually gets the house. If they can like, get it, if, if they can, if they can refinance and get a mortgage, yeah. Otherwise you're getting rid of the house, right? What they're talking about, this is pre divorce decree. They're talking about, which is nonsense. A lawyer is not going to make a decision about the house pre-divorce decree. It doesn't make any sense. All right. And this is, so this idea that, okay, you know, I, I ditch my wife and I can move in with my mistress and she's staying in the house, but she can't afford it anymore. Right. Well, the freaking, I'm probably still on the mortgage. The mortgage probably, you know, half and half, or at least it's all under my name. So it's not like I'm not still attached to the house. Right. right. Financially. Um, why would we sell the house at that point? Right? She's going to petition for divorce. As your, uh, and I was, if I were her lawyer, that's what I would say. We can afford it. He's not paying. Petition for divorce. Right? We can get temporary alimony and child support, which is actually higher than it usually is after the divorce, where she now has the money to pay for that. And that would be covered in it. Why would I sit there and say, okay, no, we should just sell the house. Why? We haven't negotiated for anything yet. We're going to sell the house. Where does the money go? 
If the house is in his name, well, that sucks. He sold the house. What if he takes that cash and blows it over the next year before we finalize the divorce? Now we got nothing to take from him. You just lost all that money. Right. So the divorce lawyer is not going to do that. It's just stupid. Why would we do that? The other thing to talk about, okay, well, a quick claim to the... To your ex-wife to give her the house or your soon-to-be ex-wife before you've even divorced her okay so i'm going to give her a quick claim but i'm still on the mortgage why would i do that on the other side of that coin is why would i give her the ownership to the house unless i'm getting something in return and if i'm getting something in return there better be a divorce decree right so if it's okay honey i will give you the house right but you can't touch any of my retirement savings in my 401k, right? Because half of that's hers. If let's say she's a housewife in his scenario, let's say I have a half a million in my 401k, 250,000 of that is hers, right? But if I say, okay, I'll give you the house, but you can't touch my retirement, right? But you got to refinance the house under your name. That would be in the divorce decree. Why would an attorney start giving things? That's just bad. I mean, that, I mean, you're a lawyer. You're supposed to represent your client zealously. That's what the actual oath is, right? So if I'm representing my client zealously, why am I giving away their shit to their ex before we have an agreement? So I don't know what he's talking right, it about. Doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I think he's pretending like he knows this, but he doesn't. It just... Well, they're not necessarily on team advocate for divorce anyway. Nobody really advocates for divorce, but it is, if you want, if, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. We got to do right. it. We just got to do it. But the bottom line is, uh, I'm going to give us this one on the cage match. Not a great win. I mean, we agree with some of them. It's, it'd be nice to have a good timeline and be amicable. But the bottom line is, you really need to get a lawyer. If you're thinking about leaving... You need to get a lawyer. You need to get a financial planner if you have a lot of assets, especially because you need to figure out what you're going to do with those assets once you get them, when they're split and where they are. Right. Right. Um, and I've done a bunch of those where, you know, the lawyer is asking you to track down where's all the money. Then you get subpoenas and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, but that whole thing about go see a counselor and then he kind of poo poos lawyers. Like, lawyers make a lot of mistakes. They don't know what they're doing. Da, 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 da. It's like, no, honey, you need to go talk to a lawyer. Talk to a lawyer first, then talk to a therapist. <laughs> right. Yeah. The name of the game is cover your ass. <laughs> yeah, I would say I would say we we did uh, rack up the win on that one, but I wouldn't call it a strong win. I would just call it like a. Yeah. Well, we were we were. All, we were fighting with 80 ounce gloves, right? <laughs> we're like, no, we were fighting in those big sumo outfits. <laughs> so it wasn't, wasn't much of a fight there. Kind of a drag, but oh well, can't, can't all be good ones.